Hey, it's uh, Stefan and Suzanne Duclos, and we will be interviewing uh, Karen Hudis. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Karen, for allowing uh, Suzanne and I to have the opportunity to ask you a few questions. And you've been in the alternative news an awful lot recently as a whistleblower for the World Bank, as you've also been uh, featured on the Forerunner Chronicles recently about the near nuking of America. Uh, Suzanne, and I would like to ask you three brief questions tonight. Um, Suzanne's going to be asking a question about Comet or the New Madrid fault line. I'll be following up a question about Comet Ison and extraterrestrials, and then we'll take a reader comment. Uh, Suzanne, it's all yours. Okay. Karen, hello. Um, you mentioned in a comment section of the story that uh, methane and butane would be used to create mini nukes, so to speak, to blow the new Madrid fault line, and they would blame Comet Ison for the resulting earthquake. Do you still believe that? Have you heard anything more about it? Last but not least, do you think the chaos that ensues afterwards will be used to declare martial law? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I really welcome the opportunity to clarify um, what, what I consider uh, the situation to be. Uh, there are a lot of risks, but I can, I can reassure your readers based on a very, very accurate game theory model that has been on track back since 2004 that we are on the way to what we call rule of law. I can tell you um, who I'm working with. Uh, I'm a lawyer and economist who spent 20 years in the World Bank legal department. I went to Yale Law School. I studied economics at the University of Amsterdam. And I have a track record. Uh, I'm a rather senior person. I've been around the block. Uh, I was interviewed for general counsel at the World Bank. And I was doing my job and reporting a cover-up of corruption. And I can tell you that that cover-up, you're hearing it from me. Um, I'm not the only one that's been reporting this corruption. It's of a very large scale. And it was documented uh, by three mathematicians in uh, the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, Switzerland. There is a group of bankers that have grabbed up the companies on the capital markets. They are pulling down 60% of the earnings per year. This is my Siamese cat, Java. <laughs> They're pulling down also, they have, uh, what they did was they put the same directors on the boards, and they also bought up all the news media. So I'm very, very glad that we have an internet and we have an alternative uh, media, and I'm very grateful to, before it's news, you've seen I've posted a number of articles up there, for which I, I'm very grateful. So uh, to answer your question, um, going back to the Madrid fault, um, there are a lot of possible what you call false flags, which are situations that can panic people. And what's happened is there have been a number of them that have just simply been uh, disarmed. We have reported them. We made sure that they didn't happen. And this is just an example of this game theory model, which is showing that there, the forces for rule of law have outmaneuvered the forces that are trying to frighten people. That's what, that's what it basically is. And I can tell you who the forces are. Um, this is, this is a, a day theory model that came out of the Defense Department. A political scientist, Yossi Kubler, who uh, was chair of Claremont University Political Science Department. And what you do is you see who are the groups that are involved in a situation, where do they stand on a problem, how important is the problem to them, and you crank out the numbers. The, um, the computers model that. And I modeled rule of law inside the World Bank in 2004, and it predicted that if the United States did not play by the rules, we were going to lose something called the Gentleman's Agreement. That's the ability, it's our leadership role. Um, for sure. 56 sure. years, we had the right just simply to name whoever we wanted to head the World Bank, and the Europeans had the choice for who was going to be the managing director of the International Monetary Fund. That ended in 2010, and this model kept it on predicting that we were going to have a currency war until a number of whistleblowers that I've been working with, including um, a Scottish whistleblower named Elaine Colville, until the two of us started getting our statements up on the UK Parliament website. I spoke actually to the UK Serious Fraud Office in 2010.
2010, the Serious Fraud Office called up the Securities and Exchange Commission, but the SEC is just being co-opted by these um, very powerful bankers, and they're allowing a lot of insider trading. Uh, when people invest in the uh, capital markets, they're getting the leftovers after the Federal Reserve and the owners of the Federal Reserve have pulled down the profits. I mean, that, that's no way. It's called state capture, and that's not continuing because the countries of the world are all working together. That's why I've had three interviews on Russia Today TV and uh, a very important um, website in Germany had um, an interview. They have 1.5 million uh, viewers per month. And there they, they wanted to know why did a German military helicopter buzz the consulate, the American consulate in Frankfurt. This is after the U.S. refused, the Federal Reserve refused to give Germany back its gold. And Germany only asked for the gold because the um, Treasury Department refused to allow them to see their gold. We, Germany had allowed us to hold the gold, but we refused to allow them to see their own gold. No wonder they wanted it back. That's an I act saw of war. reports on that. I saw yes. reports on that, yes. At the time, at the time that it happened, I saw them. Um, if, if after this, maybe we can get a couple links to put on there for the statements that you said were in the uh, UK Parliament. We'll put those links in there for you uh, right. also in the article. Stefan, you had a question? Yes, there was a story on Before It's News, actually, that we ran about Comet Ison and uh, being Nibiru. From what we understand, uh, Comet Ison is not Nibiru, despite there being a story attributed for, uh, to you stating that. Could you clear the record on that? Yes, I certainly can. Um, what happened was I had um, a conference call with a group of people one night, and uh, that's what, what one of the individuals in that conference call had said. And I don't know why I went ahead and repeated it, because I hadn't substantiated it, but one of the whistleblowers that I'm working with, Mark Novitsky, within the hour, um, corrected me. He said, Karen, you're, you're going to be discredited. You'd better correct that. And what I find really, really interesting is just how difficult it's been for me to retract that statement. So the, the group that ambushed me with that misinformation, and it was a very important lesson for me uh, to learn, and that is to, to be very clear about the information and the sources of the information so that I'm seen as a creditable source. And if you go to my website, you will see that through the years, I've been working on the corruption that I've been reporting, uh, and I've, you know, I've been uh, documenting it very meticulously. So, you know, I'm not a loose cannon, and I got, I, got, I got it wrong with Nibiru, absolutely I got it wrong, but what I found really, really interesting was that I wasn't allowed to correct that statement, and that, um, you know, that's, that should let people know that, that um, somebody wants to dis discredit me. That, that well, should make well. me more, more credible, actually. You, you did correct it. I did see it. Uh, but as I mentioned to you in a previous conversation, when I went to look for it again a month later here, it has disappeared. It went down memory hole. It's disappeared. It's been scrubbed off the Internet, basically. I'm pretty good at research, and uh, I looked for quite a while to find your disavowal of it, and it just disappeared. So I'm very glad we have it on record now. And Yes, uh, our our uh, our readers, the alternative news community, now knows the truth of what you have said, and it's on record now. So thank you very much for uh, for clearing that up. I appreciate that. Suzanne, were you going to uh, follow yeah, up with a question? Yeah, we, we have a, we have a reader question. Uh, when I was explaining to uh, somebody who sent me leads in the mail, tips in the mail, uh, that we would be interviewing you. He sent quite a few questions, but we told him we wouldn't have a whole lot of time. So it's a play on his question. The deal that was just announced with Iran. Do you think Israel has been thrown under the bus? Or, as some are implying, that it's all a setup and what we're doing is teeing Israel up to strike Iran? I'll tell you what I know. Um, and this is what's reported to me. Um, I don't have first-hand information on this, but what I can tell you from having worked on this problem for many years, there is a serious, um, what, what could I say, um, the groups that own these companies are very, very powerful, and they have, um, they have bought the media, and they are bound and determined to keep many Americans who don't know 
Iran. There have been so many deaths because of the, um, the economic sanctions. Iran is a country which, um, it's, at the moment, I understand that it has um, a technology that will provide free energy. This is a threat to many of the countries who are getting a lot of economic power, uh, economic um, gain from the sale of petroleum. You can imagine how this is going to, it's not going to sit very well with some of these countries. No, and, uh, um, and I understand actually that this re the reason that, that there was an agreement struck with Iran, this is a very wonderful development. This is showing that we are distancing ourselves from those economic forces that own the Federal Reserve System and that are creating all of this um, terrible weakness in our currency. We do not have to pay interest on our debt. We don't have to have the Federal Reserve print our dollars. This can be done by the Treasury Department. That is actually what was going to happen. Uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy, had signed an agreement that he was going to um, lease some gold, and this was going to back the currency, and then we wouldn't have to pay interest on it. Ten days before he was assassinated, that agreement was called the Green Hilton Agreement. And there is a lot of gold in, in these banks that actually belong to the entire world population. It's, um, it's something called the, um, the collateral accounts. I know the person who's the authorized signatory. They're prepared to sign over 170,500 metric tons. Yes, you heard me correct. That's what the World Gold Council says is the amount of gold that's above the earth. I'm sorry. No, that's the actual amount is um, three and four times what is reported. And there are a lot of people who say that these numbers are not accurate. I can tell you this, they are accurate. I have seen the accounts. Um, there, there is a lot of um, cover-up of corruption because the Jesuits have been very adamant about keeping the people of, of this um, world ignorant. They've deliberately done that. And there are a number of people who know quite well. Um, there, there's a, a lord in uh, the United Kingdom who has also seen documents concerning this goal. So, yes. It's good news. And so people who, who are worried, are we going to make it? Well, we just have to all pull together. We have to realize that our mainstream media is owned by these culprit, culprits, and it's, it's misleading us. Yes, and they, okay, they have I'm, been. Thank you so much, Karen, for, for, uh, for, for the wonderful insight that you, you bring to us. Thanks for having me. What I want to say is that it's very important for people to, to be critical thinkers, to look for evidence yes. of what people are telling you. I've got evidence, if you go to my website, www.kahudes.net, you will see documents that support everything I'm telling you. Thank you so much. We Yes, Sorry, yes we, will, we will certainly link to your website, and we thank you again for, uh, for, for the opportunity here, Karen. Thank you.